Hello students. My topic of discussion is solvent introduction types and handling. I am Dr. Mayur Khedkar from Hislop College, Nagpur. The contents in the presentations are introduction of mixtures, types of solution, solute and solvent, types of solvents, examples of solvents, hazards of solvent and prevention of solvent hazard or handling of solvents. Now let's talk about mixtures. A mixture is a combination of two or more substances that do not combine chemically but remain the same individual substance and which can be separated by physical method. There are two types of mixtures are there. First is heterogeneous mixture and next is homogeneous mixture. Let's talk about heterogeneous mixture. Uh, the word hetero itself indicates that it means it's a different. It consists of visibly, visibly different substances or phases, maybe solid, liquid or gas. They can be separated by filtering or any physical method. Example, you can see here it's a mix mixture of solid compound compounds together and you can separate it. It is a heterogeneous mixture. Homogeneous mixture. Homo means same. It has the same uniform appearance and composition throughout. It maintains one phase, either solid, liquid or gas. It is commonly referred as solutions. Example, a salt water. It is combination of water and some ions or salts. Now let's talk about solution. A solution is a mixture of two or more substance that is identical throughout. So it's a homogeneous solution. It composed of two component. One is solute and another one is our solvent. The substance being dissolved which is in less quantity is called as solute and the substance that dissolves the solute which is always in a excess quantity is a solvent and the combination of solute on solvent gives us a solution. Solution, the solvent is the largest part of a solution and solute is the smallest portion of a solution as I told in previous slide. These are the three major kinds of solution that may be gaseous solution, example our air which contain ample of gases mainly oxygen and nitrogen, liquid solution like beverages, it may be milk and water and solid solutions alloys like steel, brass etc. Now concentration of solution, the amount of solute dissolved in a solvent at a given temperature is referred as a concentration. Described as a dilute if it has a low concentration of solute and you can see in the diagram the concentration of solute is less it is shown by this and the tiny balls are the solvent molecule. Whereas solution will be referred as concentrated if the concentration of so solute molecule is higher, you can see that there is increase in number of these bigger balls which is solute. Concentration again unsaturated it has a less than the maximum concentration of solute and then solutions can also be a saturated has the maximum concentration of solute dissolved in it. Supersaturated that contain more dissolved solute than, than normally possible. Next factor is solubility. The amount of solute that dissolved in a certain amount of solvent at a given temperature and pressure to produce a saturated solution. 
various factors are there which are responsible for solubility like shaking temperature particle size etc so increasing the amount of solute does not increase the rate of dissolving now our main important topic is classification of solvents solvents are broadly classified into three categories depending upon its polarity its composition and its state first of all i will discuss about composition what is the component present in solvent that class that gives is a classification like organic and inorganic as you know that organic means the compound which contain carbon and hydrogen together so if in a solvent carbon and hydrogen are present or any organic functional group is present that solvent will be referred as organic function organic solvents organic solvent is further classified into two categories it may be aliphatic organic solvent or it may be aromatic organic solvent example of aliphatic organic solvent is n butane n hexane cyclohexane etc and aromatic organic solvent is benzene toluene xylene etc next comes the inorganic solvent the solvent in which carbon and hydrogen both are not present example ammonia example hcl these are the inorganic solvent next classification is depend upon its state like solvent can be liquid as usual you yeah, you refer it as a solvent like water by the way water is a universal solvent next is the super critical in the super critical state these are recently used in which the gases like carbon dioxide it is compressed under high pressure and at high pressure it is converted into a liquid state and ultimately the it act as a solvent so they are called as super critical solvents one more category is there which contains ionic liquid ionic liquid are solid at room temperature but once you heat it it will convert it into liquid state and thus it can be used as a solvent at higher temperature apart from this two kinds of classification one popularly used classification of solvent is its polarity you mostly people classify solvents or identify solvents depending upon their polarity so on the basis of polarity solvent is classified into two major classes it may be polar solvent and it may be non polar solvent now in this slide you can see that this is mu is not is equal to 0 this is a dipole moment so any compound whose dipole moment is not zero that compound or that solvent are called as polar solvent like there will be some pole like positive pole will be there and negative pole will be there whereas the compound in which dipole moment is zero there is no polarity no neutral no positive negative charge is there there is only neutral charge so neutral is there that compound are called as non polar solvent example of non polar solvent is benzene in benzene it's c6h5 there is no positive or negative charges there then alkene again a hydrocarbon no negative positive charge and carbon tetrachloride these are the examples of non polar solvent some more solvents you can add like carbon dioxide if it is in supercritical state is there then any hydrocarbon petrol 
xylene these are the non polar solvents next polar solvent is classified into again two categories as i mentioned polar solvent means the solvent in which there is polarity positive and negative charges are present so if a solvent which contains a proton and that proton is attached to a electronegative atom such as oxygen nitrogen or any halogen group in such cases the solvents are referred as protic solvent whereas a aprotic solvent is a solvent it is a protic polar solvent is a solvent in which hydrogen is attached to a carbon atom which that carbon atom attached to electronegative carbon uh, uh, atom so ultimately this proton is not available for donation so it is polar due to this electronegative carbon attached to the group but it is aprotic because it does not give proton free proton whereas in previous case in polar protic solvents this h is directly attached to the electronegative group so what happened due to this electronegative group electronegative group will attract shared pair of electron with the hydrogen towards electronegative atom group and thus h become h positive and this h will be easily available for donation and in that way it acts as a protic solvent but it's a polar protic solvent you can see the example like in case of water proton h is there and it is attached to the electronegative oxygen so you can say that it is inorganic polar protic solvent in case of ammonia nitrogen is more electronegative compared to hydrogen therefore it is again polar protic solvent phenol it is example of organic compound so phenol again oxygen is directly attached to the electronegative oxygen atom hydrogen is attached to the electronegative oxygen atom and therefore it is example of polar protic solvent and last is hf hydrogen fluoride hydrogen is directly in contact with the fluorine and therefore this h is acidic and it is a polar protic solvent on the other hand acetone dmf dmso they don't have proton directly attached to this electronegative atom and thus they are a protic polar solvent now let's do the exercise identify the type of solvent on the screen you can see that this is a molecule of n n dimethyl formamide by looking at this structure you can see that the carbon is attached to the more electronegative oxygen and more electronegative nitrogen and there is no proton attached to these electronegative atoms therefore due to this it is a protic solvent and due to this electronegative oxygen and nitrogen it become polar so the inference is this is a polar aprotic solvent now n n dimethyl acetamide you can see here again carbon is attached to the oxygen and nitrogen so it become polar and there is no hydrogen which is attached to the this electronegative atom so it is again a example of polar aprotic solvent let's talk about carbon disulfide identify this carbon disulfide now here you can see that there is no proton present so there is no issue of protic or aprotic and dipole moment if you can find out dipole moment of this molecule its dipole moment is zero because this carbon is equally attached with the sulfur on either ends so due to dipole moment zero it become non polar solvent there is no polarity in carbon disulfide present next is thf tetrahydrofuran due to presence of oxygen it has a lone pair it is polar in nature but there is no proton so it is polar aprotic solvent 
एच एम पी ए एच एम पी एज अक्सा मिथिल फॉस्फोरामाइड दिस इज अगेन अ पॉप्युलर सॉल्वेंट यू कैन सी हियर द फॉस्फरस अटैच विद द नाइट्रोजन ऑक्सीजन मोर इलेक्ट्रोनेगेटिव एटम्स आर देयर सो इन अ कंपाउंड इफ इलेक्ट्रोनेगेटिव एटम्स आर प्रेजेंट दैट मींस दे आर पोलर इन नेचर बट नाउ देयर इज नो प्रोटॉन देयरफॉर इट इज पोलर अप्रोटिक सॉल्वेंट lastly dichloromethane due to two chlorine group there will be polarity but this chlorine group are not attached with hydrogen directly so it become non polar solvent and again dipole moment in non polar solvent will be the zero now this is example on a single slide i tried to give you the glance of a different example you can see ethanol ethanol contain oh H attached to electronegative oxygen, so it become polar protic. Acetic acid again, it gives H, so it is again a polar protic solvent. Ethyl methyl ketone, so ketone is a polar moiety, but hydrogen is not linked directly, so it is polar but a protic solvent. DMSO in previous slide, DMSO is a a polar a protic solvent. water it contain h attached to electronegative oxygen therefore water is polar protic ammonia is also a example of polar protic molecule toluene the structure of toluene is benzene ring attached to the methyl group so overall only carbon and hydrogens are there and you know that hydrocarbons are non polar in nature and thus tol toluene is also an example of non polar solvent anisol anisol contains benzene ring attached with o ch3 group now whenever there is any electronegative atom is there that means there is lone pair and due to that due to lone pair that solvent become polar and there is no proton directly attached to that oxygen therefore it become polar aprotic solvent and lastly the n butane that is hydrocarbon they are non polar in nature now what are the key point from this observation if you if you look at the reaction if reagent is basic in nature then we use non polar or aprotic solvent the reason being is base can replace hydrogen atom with polar protic solvent and it will no longer available for the reaction let's take an example of sn2 reaction in sn2 reaction the rate of reaction depends upon methyl bromide as well as it depends upon the oh nucleophile if you want to react that oh you should use a aprotic solvent the reason being is as oh is required in sn2 reaction and if you use protic solvent what protic solvent will do protic solvent will give proton to the oh minus and oh minus that is uh, the nucleophile will become water molecule and it will no longer react and therefore the reaction rate will be suppressed so in sn2 reaction we usually prefer non polar or non polar aprotic polar solvent so that the reaction rate can be enhanced so in that way before starting any reaction you should know the reaction intermediates which are going to be generated in case of free radical reaction we need a non polar solvent again because free radical are the charge species and if non polar solvent are there that will enhance the reaction that is all about the chemistry of solvent its type its uh, uh, classification and all now let's talk about a practical sense a solvent hazards solvent hazards there are main solvent hazards are associated with their its use its storage and transport because in these three activities only we are going to come in contact with the solvent what can happen solvent can lead to a fire 
it can lead to its bigger version explosion solvent can create a health hazard and lastly they can be they, they can have the environmental hazard as well so fire and explosion hazards an explosion or fire will occur when combustible substance a combustible agent and effective ignition source are simultaneously placed together generally combustion will lead to two activities it may generate fire so fire is a thing which occurs in open space whereas an explosion if it occurs in a closed space usually you will find that the fire is a smaller version of explosion uh, the combustion whereas when you say there is explosion explosion is a bigger version so both are dangerous but explosion is more dangerous than fire so there are different terms are used in this solvents that are flash point fire point and ignition temperature the flash point is minimum temperature that liquid give up sufficient vapors to ignite momentary at surface next is fire point the temperature at which vapors give up sufficient vapor to support combustion once ignited so one can say that a flash point is a momentary but fire point is a long lasting so once a solvent got fire it is difficult to control and lastly the ignition temperature the minimum temperature of a fuel in air must be heated to start self sustained combustion outside the ignition source so these are the combustion hazard next are health hazards certain solvent especially inflammable solvents are more harmful to health for the person who is dealing with him it you might have heard about the benzene benzene is a flammable solvent flammable solvent the flames are continuously coming and that flames the person who is handling can inhale and that may percolate to the lungs of the person who is handling and that may damage here word flammable should be there so this is a main health hazard of the solvent one more thing of health hazard if you came in directly contact with solvent if you are using solvent solvent without a gloves so due to contact with your skin solvent also can be dangerous lastly the environmental hazard usually the major part of part of any reaction is solvent solvent is always taken in excess at the end of reaction our focus is mainly on a product so what we do at the end of reaction we stop it we cool it if we are heating it you filter it so whatever stuff on a filter paper you just use it you just you focus on that and the content which is in a filtrate you ignore it and that content so called solvent or used solvent end up into the sink now this solvents specially chlorinated solvent cause damage to the environment because they will go to the water bodies and they will contaminate the water bodies so it can create a environmental hazards too now after this all hazards you should know how to handle it so there should be some proper techniques to utilize it so i will suggest some ways in solvent handling is know your solvent first in all chemicals not only solvents if you closely observe the bottle or container of any compound any solvent you will find such kind of logo on the bottles if you see this kind of logo onto the solvent that means it is flammable it is for explosive it is for corrosive and it is for oxidizer so various kinds of 
logos are written onto the solvent so let me tell you a small incident of this solvent hazard you can see here a recent news not a recent news a few days back at the barc center some researcher who were doing their work they got caught in a fire due to the solvent you can see the heading fire in nuclear hub two researcher burned alive in a brc lab similarly this is the drdo news uh, a fire at uh, omni baba atomic research center again uh, two person were killed so this kind of incident occur in the laboratory due to the unawareness of the chemicals and solvents one more incident were there in a laboratory the students were celebrating birthday in the laboratory in laboratory solvents are there flammable solvents were there and once they blew the candle in light the candle the lab caught fire so these are the silly mistakes can be happened by your ignorance so first of all know your solvent is your first step then refer the msds msds is a material safety data sheet it is not only for solvent for all the chemicals that with which you are dealing with you should refer it that will give you the guide what is the flash point of liquid what is ignition temperature of liquid what special precaution you should take what should not be mixed with this particular types of solvent you should just go through it so refer msds then use safety gears while working in the solvent working with the solvents that are most most important thing that you should do so all these are the safety gears that you can utilize so use lastly use modern greener and safer alternatives like super critical co2 ionic liquid etc instead of traditional solvent because that not only cut down the hazards due to flammable solvent that not only prevent the health hazard and environmental hazard that are easier to handle that are easier to dispose so these are the modern techniques that you can um, use lastly i express sincere thanks to the organizers especially uh, principal shri shivaji science college amravati for organizing such a wonderful event and head of the department of chemistry shri shivaji science college amravati and all teacher colleagues thank you thank you all